Hey, Jenna. Oh, very impressive. Indeed. These are, this is beautiful. Letter forms are just about perfect. I mean, listen, I got to tell you something, Jenna. You've got one steady hand. I mean, I've been taught this class a lot, and this is one of, I just cannot believe how accurate your letter forms are. I mean, they're gorgeous. I've got this little, our document open over here so we can kind of make some comparisons, and there's just a couple of areas. Boy, I just can't believe how well you rendered these letter forms. Oh, beautiful. Just a couple of recommendations. So uh, Franklin Gothic um, book font typeface has variable stroke, um, variable width strokes, which meaning, uh, which means that the stroke width varies in, in depending on which portion of the letter um, we're looking at. So as we can see right here, this is the thin area of the stroke. And look how much thinner it is here than it is here. We definitely want to depict that here. Okay, and then also in the lowercase n, we also have variable um, width stroke right here, where that branch of that n kind of meets into the uh, the uh, uh, vertical um, this vertical stroke right here. So we can we, you want to you want that to be noticeable there. We can see it a little bit here, but not so much in this n here. Um, I think that the only other thing I would recommend is well, you know, we didn't go through your writing, but let's do that. Yeah, let's go. Let's do that. Here's my first iteration trial. Accurate and consistent spacing was definitely the biggest challenge here. Uh, definitely for you. I mean, it doesn't look like you were challenged at all by depicting the letter forms realistically and accurately. So yeah, so that would leave what spacing, right? So so that makes sense. Having a baseline mainline cap line was super helpful. Looking forward to any at all feedback. Yes, baseline mainline cap line, and I think that there's a couple of issues with the baseline mainline and cap line um, as I see it, anyways. And I think that just a couple of improvements here will really really take your final iteration to a. A higher level. Um, so let's go ahead and, and take a look now. Based on the baseline, mainline, and cap line, it looks here like you know what I typically do is I just typically take something and use it as a straight edge. So let's use this as a straight edge. And what I want to do is I just kind of want to take a look at this, and I'm going to mark that cursor right there. What I'm doing is I'm trying to establish the the, the height of the mean line right here. So here's the mean line at the top of that right there, and then the baseline is right there where that. So, oh gosh, you know what? I am so sorry. I'm really messing, <laughs> messing this up pretty badly. So let's just do this. Let's, uh, oh geez. Okay, there we go. So what I'm trying to do again is let's establish that. So we can see that that line right there. So I'm just gonna move this over here. Yeah, we can definitely see that there's there there's this isn't consistent. Okay, so this mean line is not perfectly parallel with the baseline. So the first thing you want to do is you want to establish a a perfectly level baseline. Okay, so um, which should also be parallel with the bottom of the picture plane. Once you establish that perfectly level baseline, you want the mean line and the cap lines to be parallel, perfectly parallel. This distance here should be exactly the distance here. It's not, and therefore we have this kind of problem where this A is bigger than this way. And the reason being is because the baseline seems to be somewhat level, but the mean line is slanting down a little bit. So you have no choice but to follow your guides, which is reducing the sizes of your letters as we move through the word. So what you want to do is make sure you establish good, solid, consistent um, spacing there uh, between the, the mean uh, baseline and the mean line. And again, between the mean line and the cap line, those should be perfectly parallel. Okay. Now, that leaves what? Letter spacing. Let's talk about letter spacing. So right now, I think you've got excellent, what we would consider normal letter spacing, meaning that um, I, I would say that as somebody that is not experienced in um, kerning and type and letter spacing, would, we would say, and this is the basic structure of this assignment, is that normal letter spacing would be kind of considered to be even letter spacing throughout, right? And I think you've established that. Now, what we want to do is we want to apply some rules here as we move into Sunday's final iteration. Those rules are as follows. The most narrow space between two letter forms are the space between two curved letter forms, okay? So when you find two curved letter forms together, that should be the closest space. The next widest space should be between a, a, a straight letter form and a curved letter form. Okay, and then the widest space is between two straight letter forms. And the reason being is because you want this to appear to have equal volume in between the letters. Now, we know that equal spacing isn't going to equate to equal volume because the shapes between the letters are different, right? So this shape here has all this extra space over here and over here. So in order for this volume to appear to be equal to this volume, 
we would have to move this closer to reduce the volume associated with these other counter spaces, right? So that's the basic reasoning. And the reason we, we are, pay so much attention to letter spacing and word spacing is because it, it, it adds um, accuracy to reading. It adds speed and accuracy and understanding to reading. So uh, a, a, pair, as a word that is spaced correctly is able to be viewed as one word as opposed to a series of letters. A sentence that has good letter spacing and word spacing is able to be read in groups of words as opposed to stumbling where there shouldn't be spaces. And every time there's a, a space that shouldn't be, um, it creates a break in reading. Okay, so for example, if there was a, a, a little bit of a wider space right here between the N and the A, we would read this word. There would be a natural break there. Instead of reading through it, we would go banana. We would go banana. Okay, and you can see how that slows down reading and retention. So that's the reasoning behind expeditious letter spacing. So follow those basic rules, and um, and boy, I'm looking forward to seeing your your final iteration. This is so good. Maybe you can share some tips for, for some of the classes. Some, some classmates are struggling a little bit with, with craft. Maybe you could should could share some tips, but just really fantastic job. Okay, so those would be my recommendations moving forward. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all, please let me know. I'll be glad to make any necessary clarifications. Great job, Jenna. Thank you very much.